you are at First Coast Cardiovascular Institute today and uh, we're going to be showing you a procedure called gray saphenous vein ablation. We'll be using radi uh, laser uh, for this. Uh, we have in my team today Jason Roberts to my right, uh, Dana on my left, and uh, it's Vakar Ali, is, uh, that's me. Uh, our patient today is a lady with the symptomatic uh, severe venous insufficiency of the right lower extremity. As part of our workup, we have already done a uh, venous insufficiency ultrasound on her, and she happens to have severe reflux, and she is symptomatic. So we will be showing you today how to access the gray saphenous vein under ultrasound guidance and how to proceed with the procedure after that. And then once we complete the procedure, we'll show you what the post-op care in involves and uh, how the patient should uh, comply with that. So we'll begin our procedure, Jason. Uh, so let's take our positions. So first thing what's going to happen is that Jason is going to visualize this gray saphenous vein under ultrasound guidance. So you can see on the screen there, and Jason will point uh, where, where the GSV in fact is. So what we're going to be doing is first and foremost, we need to follow the gray saphenous vein up the thigh and make sure that we got a good clear run, assess for any branches or any type of intraluminal material or phlebitis or anything like that. We have a pretty good run all the way up to the common femoral vein. We can also see the great saphenous vein here as it empties into the common femoral vein, the typical saphem junction. Jason, can you point for them where the great saphenous vein is coming in and where it goes into the deep system? Absolutely. So you can see the great saphenous vein coming in from the top here. It actually drains down into the common femoral vein, which is here. And here's your traditional Mickey Mouse right here. Here's your two ears and the common femoral vein itself. And the actual saphem junction is here. So we'll open it up just a little bit kind of take a look at the anatomy itself. Um, we have a really nice run, as you can see, coming in from here, dumping into the common femoral vein. And then you can see that gastric vein emptying in to the saphem junction as well. Um, we definitely would like to preserve that. So in staging the case, we're gonna come back probably two centimeters behind that actual gastric vein. So I think we got a pretty good run. So now the assessment is for Dr. Ali is, do we want to come below the knee? Um, or do we actually want to access a little bit above the knee? Either which way is, uh, I believe the vein is sizable enough for either which way. Yeah, so in this uh, patient, uh, guys, we have uh, already done an ultrasound and she has had previous ablation as well. So her below the knee GSV is partially closed. So we're going to try to access it just above where it recanalizes and then our hope is to go ahead and do a successful uh, ablation of the rest of the vein. So we'll begin our procedure now. So here is just a hypodermic needle and I'm going to be numbing up the skin just above the vein. And you can see at the very top of the screen that little, I'm gonna compress it right here yeah. so you can see it kind of winking at you. Uh, this one's a little bit more superficial. So it's gonna take a little bit more technical ability to grab this one, but I got good confidence in Dr. Ali over here. Thank you. So what I do generally, guys, is I press it with my finger to see exactly where I'm going to be accessing it, and you can see the depression on the screen. So now I'm going to give a little numbing here. Honey, a little bit of pinch coming up for you. Okay, here's my lidocaine. So you don't want to give too much because then you lose where the, the vein actually is. Going on, if you can focus on this needle and uh, show them how I'm trying to just access a little pinch here. So on the screen, you guys see my needle. Uh, so I will, there I'm going in now. And that's the needle. And that's moving nice and smoothly, so that tells me that I'm in the vein. And you can see but again, this vein has been treated before, so it's the wire sort of hangs up in the walls, which, is, which can happen. So now I'm in there, and Jason, you can show them you know, how the wire went smoothly. So this was good for you guys too to see. Typically, it's very easy to access the vein, and you can advance the wire without any problem. But issues like this can happen as well, especially in previously treated great saphenous veins that are partially uh, thrombosed. So you may have some technical challenges. And then again, so what you typically do is 
ask uh, your sonographer to scan the vein a little bit more cephalad and then uh, find a spot that is uh, nice and free of any previous thrombus, and then you can advance the wire freely. And then we confirm our wire position, Jason. Can you show them that? Sure. You can see it here. This is the transverse shot. So you can actually see the bright echogenic wire inside the vein. Um, and it's good to look at it in two views. Just make sure it stays inside the vein and it doesn't exit. And then you can also get a better shot of it in long here. So you can see on, this, on the picture here, you can see how tortuous the actual vein is and the wire inside of it. So this will actually grab the wire like Dr. Ali said, and it'll give you a little bit of resistance. So, you know, you know on a scale of one to 10, I, I think the access was definitely a nine, you know, and then understanding the anatomy is the best part of it. So, and then we, like I said, one more time, just you can take a look at it in long, you can see the wire inside the vein as it goes up. Um, so we got a pretty good run. So once we uh, actually put the dilator in, it'll straighten out, we'll actually straighten out this little area here and give us probably, hopefully a good smooth run. Jason will now load this catheter on this, show them if you can pay, the, yes, he loads them on this, on this O35 wire. So this is an over the wire system. Um, and in a case like this, I think you really want to have a wire handy, especially since we knew that we were actually getting into a procedure that had been previously bladed and it was actually a tortuous vein. So I just basically advance it on this. And sometimes you can have an issue with the skin being a little bit thick but this went in very smoothly. As you notice, this catheter is marked. So it's a 60 centimeter catheter and it has markings at every centimeter. So we are about where we need to be. So now Dana is going to attach the fiber to the actual pulse generator. Wonderful. Very good. Are you doing all right, honey? Okay, very good. Let me go ahead and just hold it here for now. Mm -hmm. Once this sheath is in position, what we want to do is we want to take one more uh, additional check because the actual fiber sticks out of the front of the catheter two centimeters. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at it again and we're going to confirm one more time our position. And let me just find everything. So as you can pay your, uh, uh, please uh, focus on the screen where you can see the most echogenic structure in the middle is the fiber, is the laser fiber itself. And what Jason is doing is he's putting this tumescence around the perivenular space so to sort of create an insufflation around the vein so patient will not experience any discomfort during this procedure. It, it, is, a, it is hydrophilic, right? The catheter itself? Yes. So it will slide. So just double check, we have plenty of room. So you want to be about two centimeter distal to the Saphnofemoral junction. There's the junction. We're a little over two centimeters, yeah. um, which is safer. Because yeah, if you do have, if you do ablate close to that, what you're trying to avoid is a formation of a tail of a blood clot, and then potentially having a, a blood clot go to your lungs. So, okay. all right. So we're ready to go. So it's very important to see once I start, I mean, once I activate the laser, that you can actually see the vein being collapsed behind the catheter. What, ha what actually is happening is there is denaturation of the protein in the wall of the vein. So basically that's what we're trying to achieve. So we're ready to go. And you can actually see the laser catheter firing and the vein closing in front of your eyes right behind the catheter. That's the catheter actually closing the vein. So I'm doing a very nice slow pullback and I've already timed it to what I need to be. And uh, you know, you can keep a good, uh, a good little compression on with probe pressure onto the vein to make sure you really have a good adherence of the vein itself onto the catheter. That's what the tumescence does as well. But you can also apply a little bit of pressure on the way out. And that's generally the recommendation. So now we just sit back and we just do a nice slow pullback. Now there are some automated pullback of catheters available as well that are on a rail, but uh, we tend to use the manual pullback, which has worked very fine, very nicely for us. So we're getting very close to our exit point. And you can see the little markers, right? Yeah, so once you're at these little tiny markers that tells you that you're at the end of the catheter, and I am pretty much out and I, I will stop right here. And then Jason holds manual pressure and then 
So this concludes our laser procedure from the stick to the end. What we do now is uh, we will uh, wrap this leg in a, a clean dressing. And then what patient goes home, uh, six hours later, they can remove that dressing and then put a compression stocking on, which they're going to use for two weeks. Uh, we do tell them uh, that they should avoid uh, taking a bath or getting into a tub uh, within the first 24 to 48 hours of the procedure because we would like the access point to heal. Also, as our protocol, we bring the patient back after 48 hours for a repeat ultrasound of the leg because we want to make sure that they don't have a DVT. You know, the risk of that is very, very low. But again, like as I pointed to you guys, that it's definitely a possibility. Uh, besides that, we encourage our patients to walk because uh, the more they walk, the better the healing is. Uh, we can also give them some anti-inflammatory post-procedure uh, that they can use if they experience any pain. So a little bit of bruising is expected, uh, sometimes some redness and erythema. And uh, we have used, Jason, in the past some antibiotics if you get superficial phlebitis or sort of an infection around the skin area, which is all those things are very rare, and I would say the incidence is less than 5%. So if you can direct your attention towards Jason now, he's going to wrap this leg up, and you can see it's not bleeding, which is a good closure. Yeah, hemostasis should be actually pretty quick since we actually did a thermal ablation on, on the way out. So hemostasis should come pretty quick. I'm not saying that they're all this quick, but I'm saying it should be relatively expedient post-procedure. So as you can see, and then as you can see here, this is all that's really left. Here's the whole access point from the actual procedure. It's no bigger than a pencil lead. So we closed you know, the whole entire thigh with about a pencil lead. Go ahead, Jason, with your... Uh... Yeah, cool. Okay, let's wrap her up. So basically, it's just a bulky dressing. It's no big deal. Um, so some institutions outfit them with their stockings. Um, I, I don't really think that we need to do that. I think we put a nice wrap on it. So we're going to start in the ankle, and then we're going to come up. You stand this way. It's going to be yeah, hard. So. Yeah, do it this way. So we're going to keep this here. Like I said, we have hemostasis, so we're pretty much good with that. But like I said, we're not going to fit her in her stockings right now. So I'm going to put a good bulky wrap underneath here. We put the tumescence in the leg. It's going to come out. There's nothing to stop that. We found that if we keep them in their stocking when they leave, um, it tends to get wet and soggy and you know nobody generally likes that. So we're going to wrap her up nice and send her home. and. In the morning, she can cut this one off and put her stocking on. So hang on, let me get this going. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the same thing. So not too tight, but uh, enough that it gives a little good, good support around the... Exactly. And if at any, any point it feels tight to the patient, they can actually cut it off and yep. remove it. You bend your knee? Bend, honey? Yeah, just relax your knee, honey. Okay. Bend, it, bend, it, bend it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's pick it up one more time. Yeah, okay. All right, go ahead. Let me have one more. Yeah. Let me get all this out of the way so we keep it clean. There we go. Put it like this. Okay. Almost. I'm going to wrap it back up a little bit higher. Mm. You're going to do additional wrapping? Yes. Yeah, I'm just okay. going to wrap it up. Can you bend the knee, honey? Bend it? There you go. Good. Yeah. Okay, guys, so this concludes our procedure, and uh, thank you very much, Jason, and thank you, Dana, for assisting me in this procedure, and thank you very much from, uh, goodbye from Jacksonville, Florida.